Welcome to Single Layer Perceptron Learning. The goals for the video are for us to quickly summarize the human brain versus the neural network and get some motivation of why neural networks are modeled after the human brain. And then the second important piece is understanding the perceptron algorithm. So in today's case, we will code it up ourselves in Python without using any libraries like TensorFlow or PyTorch and really understand what's going on in a single layer perceptron algorithm. So the first segment is a motivation of why neural networks are modeled after the human brain. The left I've shown you the neurons which is the biological neuron and there are four elements to it. One is called the dendrites which are nothing but the inputs into the neuron. The cell body is actually the nucleus, the biological nucleus, right at the center here. And then we have axons, which are nothing but activations or transformations of signals that are coming out of these nucleus before they can go out. And then we do have something called as a terminal axon, which are indications of the terminal nodes or the last nodes activation components. The artificial neuron, which we have modeled, the most simplest representation of that is a perceptron, which again has its input. So in this particular case, it's x1, x2, xn are all our inputs that so we're going to be passing in, usually an n-dimensional array. And then we're going to have a function here, which is going to make certain calculations, and then certain activations are also going to happen, following which the outputs come. Okay, We will study today what those calculations are and what activations are going to be happening when we look at the Python code. The neuron, this particular case, is just a single neuron that's, that's represented, but right here at the bottom I've written it as multiple, where we have multiple neurons and they have been connected using a word called synapse. So what synapse is actually doing is it is transferring information from one neuron to another neuron and it is also called the information transfer mechanism. When it comes to neural networks, we are going to be using multiple layers to be connected. The key terminologies we have learned between the biological world of human brain and the artificial intelligence in our neural networks. Now let's focus our attention on the one single perceptron which we have seen. This, this is just a little elaboration of the same picture I have shown you here. Okay. So let us now get into the details and understand what is the perceptron and what is the goal of the perceptron algorithm. So perceptron is, as we have seen, a replica of our biological neuron with only one important goal, which is to do classification. Okay, That's what it was built for. And it has four components. One is a set of inputs, which is x1, x2, x3, xn minus 1, and xn that are actually going into our system and then we do have the concept of weights and biases so weights and biases are think of them as coefficients that we have seen in the linear regression or polynomial regression space so those are weights that are initialized and that are being learned by the system and then we do have the third component which is the net sum which is basically we're putting together all the weights with respect to the inputs and we're weighting them and summing them up, which is what this particular uh, summation is standing for. Following that, we have an activation slash step function. So whatever activation we have applied. Sometimes we'll apply nonlinear activation, which is the majority of the case. And in some cases, we'll apply linear transformation or linear activation, like the example which we will see today. So irrespective of what type of activation is applied, we are applying an activation before it goes out. So this is what is the functioning of an one single neuron now we're going to take an example and really walk through each line of code in Python. So let's set the problem up in context. So we have been given a problem in hand. The problem is that we have two features, feature 1 and feature 2. And we have the class label for each of the rows. Okay, And for our own convenience, what I've done is I have kind of put the red color on the top, I mean, or the orange color on the top here, which is referring to all similar classes which has been labeled as minus one class and then uh, the blue color at the bottom which is all representing uh, the second class class number one so out here in the picture I've shown them uh, 
is shown the same. So I have one class which is the orange red class and then the other class which is the blue class. So now we are going to run the perceptron algorithm. Right now this black line is our ideal line that we have drawn. Now what are we going to do? We are going to apply the perceptron algorithm to find the weights such that we classify the points correctly. What does that mean? That means the slope of this line, the weights 1 and weights 2 for feature both features will have to be found along with any particular bias that might be there. The next thing we're going to also see is that we're going to be continuously adjusting this weight as part of the algorithm till an ideal line has been found. So that is what the algorithm is going to help us do. To get a better insight of what algorithm is really going to do in step by step before we even see the code, I'm going to show you the output of what we will get from the code and then we will understand what's going on. Okay. So first when we start we are going to basically be having a random line drawn and this random line we are indicating it in green color. So we have all these data points and this black line I've drawn just to tell you that that is the magic line that is the ideal line we want to get as close as possible but we are starting off with a random line which is the green line. So initially once we draw this random line which is based on a random uh, x and um, y coordinates what we see is we are seeing that there are errors we are seeing that it is not perfectly classified. It has multiple errors for red point and possibly one error for blue point. Okay, So those things are all going to be marked. So it is going to fundamentally learn the steps to say, look, first, initially, my weights are going to be 0. And I've drawn a random line. After that, after drawing the random line, I have to update the weights in such a way that my errors, these red errors are minimized and even there was just one point of blue errors minimized. So let us see what happens in the next epoch. These are all happening for each data point so I'm going to go to the epoch number two to show you how this line is starting to shift. Alright so let's come back up here before I go to epoch number two and this is for each data point. So first data point comes in, second data point the third data point, again, the line is shifting slightly, if you might see. In the fourth data point, there are actually no errors right now. Till this point, there is no errors. So the line is really not shifting that much. But the moment we came at this point, at this point where we have a data point index, data point number five, we can see the line has shifted significantly. Thus, the new green line is drawn like this, even though our ideal line was like this. So now, if we evaluate what the errors are, we probably have drawn a really poor line of segregation. The errors are possibly a lot more. So we will continue iterating again to try and minimize that error as we go through each data point within the epoch. So let us see where else we have a major change. So at again at this point of the data point number 10 because that is the last data point we have 10 data points we are starting to see the line has shifted again more to the right this time and this time it again has two errors and then this also this is a point that is right on the line but the blue points if you observe have actually been correctly identified there are no errors in the blue point so this goes on this concept of uh, it moving the line to try and find an ideal split in such a way that the errors are zero or at least minimum for the given epochs is what is going on in here. So that's the important message I want you guys to take and as we will see as it goes through more and more epochs so we are still in the first epoch which means we are putting through all data point one data point after another in our example we are putting that through and I'm highlighting which is the data point we are currently processing through these colors. So let's go down, let's go down, let us see what it really has learned. So when it came from Epoch 1 to Epoch 4, there has already been an improvement, a significant improvement where it has already drawn the green line much, much similar and parallel to the black line, which was our ideal line. All right, let's come down further, further down. I'm going into Epoch number 5. I'm seeing if there is any improvement in Epoch number 5. Yes, there has been some improvements. And then finally, when once it's finished epoch number five, what we can see is it has perfectly classified my red points from my blue points, and it has drawn the line. It is not exactly drawn on the ideal line that we had benchmarked, which is the black line, but it found a solution which satisfies the main constraint, which is the red points should be separated from the blue point. So now that we understood what the algorithm is actually done iteratively, let us now go and take a look at the code 
to really see how we did it. So it's really simple code. So first, let's get our imports in place. So what are we importing? We're importing matplotlib. We're getting numpy and we are getting random. This random is helpful for us to get some random number. Next, we are putting in our uh, inputs. So this is the inputs that have been given to us. This is given to us, like these are the feature one, feature two, and the label. So this is something I've shown you earlier as how I put it in the grid here in multiple colors, but that same values is what we are now getting as inputs, both as an array, and also we are keeping the inputs as a dictionary. We are initializing a couple of variables, and most important variable we have to initialize are y, which is the kind of the output we really want at the end of the day. And also we are putting in our best fit line. So this is the black line that we drew. So we knew the answer for this problem. Therefore, we were able to do this. All right. So now we'll go down and let us take a look at a, a, the main function. So the, the main function has got three steps. Step number one is we are going to go and initialize the weights. Initially, we are initializing it to 0, 0. Then the bias, again, is not initialized to 0, but its bias is initialized to 1. Then we are setting up a threshold, which is nothing but our activation functions, one of the variables we use in the activation function. And then we are setting up our bump parameters to be 1, which is we are calling it the learning rate. This measures how much are we going to be moving the coefficients as we search for a solution. And then the maximum number of epochs we want to try, that is in this variable. Following that, we are basically setting up a graphics mode, and then we're going into the step 2. Step 2 is looping in for each of the epochs. So we have set from one to maximum number of epochs. We're going to be iterating. And within that, each for each epoch, we will be iterating across each data point in our overall input space. So that's, that's what this i is going to be carrying. So the, this is the second for loop for i in range of 0, comma ln of x. Following that, we are doing a very important calculation here, which is the weighted sum. So you, you would have seen it out here. I explained that there is something called as a weighted sum, which is nothing but taking in the weights, taking in the corresponding inputs, multiplying them, and then summing all of those across the input variables. So fundamentally, you're taking x1 into w1 plus x2 into w2, xn minus 1 into wn minus 1 plus xn plus w into wn that's what we are doing that is our weighted sum all right see here in the code all we are doing is we are going in for each of the input variable we have we are multiplying it with the corresponding coefficient which is in our w variable x is my input variable and then i'm just adding them all up so this would give me my weighted sum and then i obviously have a bias so i would be adding the bias to the weighted sum following which i apply my activation function so in this particular case the activation function is really simple all i've said is if my out this value this is the output but if it is greater than zero, then my return value from the activation is one. And if it is less than zero, then my return value out of this activation is minus one. So once I do that, then I have my values going out. My output has been transformed using an activation function, which is what we have here, into a new variable, which is the y variable. So for the y variable, now we're going to be checking whether it matches with my class variable or not. If it matches to my class, then nice and fine. Very good. My output is useful. If it's not matching with my class, when I say class, whether it is minus one or plus one, then I have to update the weight. So what this literally meant is if my output for the given input value, if my output that I calculated is as expected, I will not do anything. But if it is not like as how I expected the output to be, then I would have to update my weights. So I'm updating my weights here using my learning rate as my bump value. Following that, I'm actually finishing that up for each coefficient of the weight. So I have two coefficients in weights, weight one, weight two, because I have two inputs, feature one and feature two. Okay. So I'm also updating the bias, which is only for once. Following that, so that is really the algorithm. That is really the core of the algorithm. Following that, I've done some code basically to do plotting. So I've, what I've done is I've done the plot work so that we can highlight certain data points and also understand how close is this green line. But let us now run this and see what happens. Now I'm running it as it's coming out here. It's, it's still running. It's still running for e one epoch. It, it has a number of data points. So it is. It keeps changing the line. Finally, it's still it is now started epoch number five. It is running epoch number five. And every time when we are seeing it, I'm also plotting which is the data point for which it is now doing the iteration. 
okay I'm also printing a couple more details which is what was my input value at that stage what sort of a weight value was there and then what was my output sum so that I really can debug these informations but then it has converged very nicely at epoch number five very close to our black line as we had seen earlier so with using really simple code we have now designed single layer perceptron which is actually the core of how neural network is going to be put together